Hi all, let's have a look at another very exciting game from the recent TSEC Super Final. This was in game 16. Stockfish playing white. The opening book given was actually in the Robash or modern defense territory. So a very hyper modern start to the game. Knight c3 from Stockfish here, d6, bishop e3, a6, queen d2. Now here is the end of the book. So this is the final book move given to them b5. Now Stockfish plays f3. So this is a very useful formation, depriving that g4 square from black. And the battery is very useful quite often. If if the knight ever leaves g8, sometimes bishop h6 is desirable to swap off this bishop and weaken these dark squares. Okay, so here we have actually the knight moving. Uh, if that knight waited around, it's still dangerous uh, for black on the h4. For example, this position, uh, white well, can get at least a small edge. But sometimes, yeah, the knight is actually deliberately left behind to avoid this bishop exchange. But here, yeah, Lila plays knight f6. Now, in this position, white castled queenside. And now we have b4. It's almost a ready-made attack if black castles with bishop h6. For example, this position, white seems to be in a... A very very dangerous attacking uh, position here. Uh, so b4 was played here, knight c e2, a5. So Lila for the moment is trying to drum up some queenside counterplay. King b1, knight b7, and now a very interesting move indeed, g4. If instead h4, then actually h5 looks visually comfortable as if white's attack is going to be slightly blockaded. It'd be difficult to sort of break through. Uh, if g4 black could just take that and here play c6, it seems as though black would be doing fine. But g4 causes some major issues now. If black ever plays h5, g takes is on the cards. And it also means that the knight can come to g3 behind that g pawn, supporting g5 sometimes with greater effect without knight h5. Uh, which would incur a penalty. So a very interesting move and something I used to play actually myself when I was white against the King's Indian uh, defense in the Simish variations, G4 before H4. Uh, so now we have Knight B6 being played by Leela. Just to give an example of H5, uh, G takes, Knight takes, here is actually a strong move, Knight H3 and then Knight F4. This is getting a very dangerous position indeed. All sorts of possibilities there, and the h pawn's free to run up the board as well, supported by the knight on f4. Uh, if e5 instead, then actually g5 here is, is useful for d takes, and this position is actually very dangerous indeed after f4. If black castles f5, with the knight being a liability on c6, this position because black can't take without dropping c6, then this is going to get a form pawn, massive advantage for white. So very, very tricky after g4. So knight b6, which does kind of threaten knight c4, that's extinguished with knight g3. Uh, losing the dark square bishop is not that good idea, but it, even so, white's maybe still technically got a, a small advantage, but this is not something white really desires to do in general. So knight g3 covers uh, the c4 square. Black plays h5 now. And we have g takes. If g5, this just closes up the position, making it a lot more comfortable for the black king, safety in general. It should be about even. So g takes is the way to play it. Open up the lines. Knight takes, knight takes, h5, rook takes. And now h4. So there's a temporary blockader. And maybe from a positional perspective, you could say that this is a kind of weakened pawn. But king safety here is a major factor. So I believe that the tactical aspects are actually a lot more significant in this particular case than the positional ones. Bishop d7, we have knight h3, which offers a gambit pawn, basically. 
Otherwise, knight f4 and h5 anyway. So Lila accepts this very dangerous gambit with the king still in the center. If it's ignored, then knight f4 hitting the rook and then say bishop e2. This is just extremely dangerous for black. This kind of scenario with h5 being played at the right time, opening up the lines is very desirable for white. So rook takes h4 though. Yeah, we're in very dangerous territory indeed. Now with queen g2, that supports the knight and unpins the rook so that knight f4 is now possible. We have rook takes h3. This leads to black losing the light square bishop, which actually lights up this diagonal now. This is a major diagonal for white. We have e6. If c6 trying to cover up the diagonal, the queen's also now threatening the immediate queen h7. It goes into there with very strong uh, winning position like this, for example. Uh, so this is extremely dangerous indeed. Here, this scenario, if bishop f8, bishop g5, bishop h3, these, these bishops are just real killers here. And then, yeah, white's really, white really can just build up for e5 with a big advantage. On bishop f6, there's actually e5 here because takes, there's check first and then check here. And on knight d5, queen takes and black's crumbling like this. The bishop pair here is lethal. So for example, like this is mating. It was going to be mating. Uh, it's all pretty lethal variations here on the bishop f6 line because of e5. Just to check this out again. Uh, just, another, just one more example. Here, if king if the king goes back, then check, and then the bishop pushes the king to the queen side, and it's going to be like mating as an example. So yes, it's very tricky this position. So e6 is played. We have check, king f8. On king e7, this just encourages this weakening pawn move, like f6, which weakens g6. And e6, and so basically things like d5 here are very strong. White well, could take on b6, big advantage here. The light squares are pretty weak. The bishops blunted for a while. So uh, we have king f8, bishop c6. The rook moves. Rook g1, uh, which supports bishop g5 soon. So now here, after knight c4, bishop g5, bishop f6. Again, it's not really wise to play f6 because bishop h6 hitting g6 now is uh, pretty nasty. This would be nasty just ripping open the lines, as you might expect. This kind of thing is just lethal, really, for the black king safety, and black can end up losing the rook on b8. So uh, bishop f6, check. We have queen h2, so still hitting the queen, bishop f6, and now f4. We have bishop takes g5. If black plays something like a4, white builds with rook h1, the pressure. So for example, like this, and then this is just lethal. Black's really in a, a massive bind in, this, in these kind of scenarios. With the king in the center, it's it's not surviving. Uh, let's have a look at this again. Also, just simply bishop takes. Check here. Picking up the rook is, is possible as well. So bishop takes g5 was played f takes it's a miserable state of affairs for the black king safety it seems this opening really led to a tactical position and stockfish's gambit uh is extremely strong the earlier round 15 game actually had an h4 h5 uh being played and stockfish managed to generate a lot of counterplay on the queen side and eventually drew that game so the opening itself is not necessarily losing it seems because you know stockfish proved that it could draw with black but the way leaders played it here the king safety for the pawn this is a terrible state of affairs king e7 queen e2 knight b6 and now e5 queen g8 if b5 just to show some examples b3 cuts the knight out first and white has a huge bind in this position you can see if white had two moves, queen b5 to c5 is lethal. Now here, for example, this, 
white can actually now break down the doors of this diagonal by playing c4 here and if takes yeah a5 is now a target and yeah things are dropping off basically slowly a5 will drop off and uh yeah once white's ready to take a5 and, and then the c file it's just lethal so uh on d takes that doesn't really help as you might expect the lines are too dangerous here for the black king they can be opened up more and this diagonal is really lethal if a5 drops then b4 drops and other things drop after that so uh we have queen g8 it's a really miserable position with black having zero counterplay really this rook h1 supported by the bishop on c6 queen f2 looking at things like queen f6 now so that's parried that square is defended e takes and we have king takes on c takes this doesn't fare much better d5 for example and you can see d5 opened up this diagonal so actually bishop takes and check is extremely strong with now rook left to c4 for example is absolutely like winning winning the queen for example like that uh if rook c8 here this again queen a7 this position where the queen can actually switch back and look at f6 with that marker pawn on f6 so queen f6 is dangerous now here if queen takes there's rook e1 and here this is just winning the house of the queen takes and rook takes d7 so uh king takes the yeah, the king's walking around perilously d5 knight e5 queen f4 nasty pin queen c8 we have actually in this it looks absolutely <laughs> hopeless in fact this position and in fact i mean it looks as though rook e1 is absolutely crushing for a start but rook d1 is played uh maybe you know rook e1 maybe queen h8 okay but so rook d1 there's really no answer to this bishop d7 a really crushing tactic queen goes to h8 here if queen takes d7 here d takes e6 discovered check taking there uh so queen h8 this is opening up that check anyway now bishop a4 this is just absolutely diabolical and now the queen's coming to that sensitive diagonal to complement the bishop rook c8 check bishop b3 and here up to queen h5 bishop takes e6 yeah it tears black's king to shreds here the game actually ended here if it continues say king e7 queen takes e5 check rook f1 check check this is just an example black's going to get mated uh so yeah the it was a really crushing tactical game the opening seemed to be asking for it a bit but on the other hand yeah Leela could only draw the white pieces so in these tactical kind of openings where king safety could be a major factor it seems stockfish has the edge on 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 occasion as this shows this particular opening shows uh so well played to stockfish here uh, if you enjoyed this game video then uh please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net to play against other youtubers uh, you can also test yourself on all the variations covered in this game and more from the improve menu uh, the new puzzle books option which also has a link to the underlying annotated game and in the addendum of this video i'll choose one or two from that comments questions donations see description like share subscribes with the notification bell really appreciated Thanks very much. Okay, here is the puzzle book for this video. You can find this on the improved menu puzzle books. Uh, so you can choose from quite a few of the last videos. The image here will be uh, soon available, but you just go into start puzzles there. So let's filter down just for the fun chat mates to try and minimize my embarrassment uh but if you want like the harder challenges yeah check yeah check out the other ones so let's say uh mates between one and five how many uh, were then none so okay go go up a bit uh so this gives a i'm not going to go through all eight but white's plan black gets mated uh so this was in a variation uh covered 
in uh, in the analysis that might actually not have been in, in the video. So I think here white plays rook h8 check and then bishop h6. Yeah, showing how tragic black's king safety is in this game from this opening. Poor Leela. She was struggling here. This one, rook takes, rook takes. I think just a seesaw check. Maybe rook takes f5, knocks out e6. Now check here. Bishop h6. Oh no, we can just take here. More more swift. Uh, so here, let's see. I think queen h7. In this line, this is a really dangerous line for bishop h6. For queen h8. Let's get the gist of these lines. Uh, I think check here. Hang on. Yeah, maybe. Was it check here? Check here. Get, and we can come back to c4. There's a lot of versatility for the white queen being demonstrated. Uh, again, this is just another line where the queen's coming back, as an example. And here again, this is really dangerous. We can actually just take the rook as well, though. But if we're going for the checkmate, bishop h3, check, or check here, and then queen b5. Yeah, the, it's the combination of the queen and the bishop and creating mating nets here. Um, yeah, we're testing this again. There's quite a few. I put quite a few on this. On this particular line, um, I think we can just take the queen there. <laughs> uh, here, I think. Uh, okay, what was this? Interesting. Uh, was it a check? All oh, right, it was. Now rook h one. Yeah, this is just. This looks all over. Was it? E five. Takes. Takes like this, and then we can just mate on h8. Yeah, I think we get an idea actually from these puzzles that the opening was quite tricky for Leela. Her king was always exposed, it seems. Uh, after accepting the gambit, it was just uh, so many variations. Good, good, good for generating tactical puzzles, really, with Black's king safety uh, being pretty bad. Okay, check that out on the uh, improved menu of Chess World. Have fun with that as well. Thanks very much.